His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace today the Saudi Foreign Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Saud Al Faisal, who presented him with a letter from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, regarding the historic brotherly bilateral relations as well as the latest regional and international political developments. The Saudi Foreign Minister conveyed the greetings of the custodian of the two holy mosques and the Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Minister of Defence, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and their good wishes for His Majesty the King's continued health and happiness and for Bahrain's further progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King praised the deep-rooted historic relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and expressed appreciation and pride in Saudi's honourable stances and constant support for Bahrain. He affirmed that Saudi stances reflect the solid relationship between the two countries and embody the joint cooperation and coordination that serve both countries and the interests of their peoples. His Majesty valued the pioneering role of Saudi Arabia in supporting the GCC march towards full integration between its member states, in addition to its supportive positions on all Arab and Islamic issues. His Majesty the King asked the Saudi Foreign Minister to convey his greetings to the custodian of the two holy mosques and to the Saudi Crown Prince and his wishes for the Saudi people's further progress and prosperity. The meeting also discussed issues of common concern and ways of supporting security and stability in the region. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today the President of the Senate of Zimbabwe, Mrs Edna Mazongwe. His Royal Highness said that hosting the 7th Conference of the Association of Senates, Shura and Equivalent Councils in Africa and the Arab World in Bahrain was a good opportunity to expand aspects of cooperation and to consolidate Bahraini-African relations in the best interests of both sides. He affirmed that the Kingdom supports all regional and international efforts to create new ways of collaboration which have a positive effect upon global cooperation, security and stability. His Royal Highness also stressed Bahrain's keenness to support Bahraini Zimbabwean bilateral cooperation in various fields, including coordination in international gatherings. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's success in establishing an effective and developed democracy based on law and constitution through the Shura and Representative Councils, which perform their duties with full responsibility in monitoring and legislation. His Royal Highness asked the President of the Zimbabwe Senate to convey his greetings to Zimbabwe's President, praising his essential role in the country's progress. Mrs Mazongwe, meanwhile, said it was a great honour to meet His Royal Highness the Prime Minister due to his prestigious leading status in the Arab and the African world. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a letter from the President of Burundi, Pierre Nkurunziza, inviting him to visit the country. His Royal Highness was presented with the letter as he received the President of the Senate of Burundi, Gabriel Nsizi Rana. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that establishing deeper cooperation with Africa has become necessary in light of current developments in the region that require integrated international cooperation and coordination. He highlighted Bahrain's wish to strengthen relations of cooperation with Burundi, noting the key role of official exchange visits in pushing forward bilateral relations and achieving joint interests. He pointed out that current challenges require friendly countries and governments to redouble their efforts in order to achieve the integration necessary to turn the people's aspirations into reality. His Royal Highness noted that legislative councils bear the responsibility of furthering legislation on supporting international relations. 
He said he hoped the role of legislative councils, both in Bahrain and Burundi, would be reinforced and expressed pleasure in accepting the Burundi president's invitation to visit his country. The Saudi Foreign Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Saud Al Faisal, arrived in the kingdom today carrying a letter to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Upon arrival, Prince Saud Al Faisal was received by the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Ghanem Fadl Abu Anain. The Saudi Foreign Minister then left the kingdom after a short visit. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Khalifa al Dahrani, received today the Speaker of Egypt Shura Council, Dr. Ahmed Fahmi, and the delegation accompanying him. Mr. al Dahrani expressed appreciation for the honourable stances of Egypt's leaders towards the people of Bahrain through statements and declarations condemning any outside interference in Bahrain's internal affairs. He praised the long standing, deep rooted relations between Bahrain and Egypt. He also underlined the need to activate parliamentary cooperation and exchange visits between the two countries' MPs. For his part, the head of the Egyptian Shura Council stressed that any threat to the security and sovereignty of Bahrain was a direct threat to Egypt, which would not be tolerated. He welcomed Mr Al Dahrani's call to exchange visits by delegations and joint friendship committees. On the sidelines of the 23rd Human Rights Council meeting in Geneva, a Bahraini delegation headed by the Minister of State for Human Rights Affairs, Dr. Salah bin Ali Abdurrahman, met with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mrs. Navi Pile. The minister stressed the continued coordination and cooperation between the ministry and the office of the High Commissioner. The minister then briefed the UN official on Bahrain's human rights achievements during the last stage. Regarding the government of Bahrain's request to postpone the visit of the special rapporteur on torture, Professor Juan Mendes, Dr. Salah stressed that the commissioner's visit had been deferred and not cancelled. He pointed out that the government announced the postponement of the visit in line with Bahrain's policy of dealing with all the files with complete transparency. He stressed that Bahrain is and has always been an advocate of human rights and therefore its doors have always been open to all human rights figures and organisations so they may see at first hand Bahrain's human rights achievements and democratic gains. The minister spoke about Iranian statements and interventions in the kingdom's internal affairs which adversely affect Bahraini society and increase acts of violence and vandalism. For her part, the High Commissioner for Human Rights welcomed the speech of His Majesty the King pledging not to tolerate acts of torture. She also welcomed the launch of the National Dialogue and thanked the Minister for his briefing on the latest developments in Bahrain. The Financial and Economic Affairs Committee at the Representatives Council met today and discussed a draft law to establish a fund to support salaries and pensions. The committee also discussed a bill to set up an account to support the living standards of citizens working in the private sector and a bill to establish a fund to support wages and pensions. The committee decided to approve the three projects and integrate them into a single report with the inclusion of Bahraini employees both in the public and the private sectors. 
The committee's chairwoman, Latif al Gaoud, said that the draft encourages citizens to work in the private sector for the benefit of the Bahraini economy and works to improve the standard of living of pensioners in both the public and the private sectors. It also reduces the wage gap between salaries in the public and private sectors in line with the Bahrain 2030 vision. The 19th session of the National Dialogue was adjourned today due to the absence of the representatives of the National Democratic Opposition Societies. Present were representatives from the Coalition of the National and Political Societies and independents from the Legislative Authority as well as the government representatives. The Dialogue's participants expressed resentment at the action taken by the National Democratic Opposition Society's representatives, saying it reflected their society's carelessness and lack of seriousness and was an insult to the participants present. They agreed to adjourn the session in protest at the unacceptable behaviour. They also agreed that the next session would be held next Wednesday, June the 5th.